Customers recalled the Story Street staff particularly as tall or beautiful, striking women. During this era, many well-known women worked in the salon, their names familiar to clients and customers or attendees at Morel's fashion shows like Sue, Peggy Wilson, Maureen Norris and Zenobia Taranko in the 50s, in the 60s Margaret Everingham who's in the 1964 photo and in the early 60s and age 14 Lynn Hardman who modelled Frank Usher for Morel in a new publication in Hull called Groove magazine in 67 also joined. If you go to House of Morel UK and type in Frank Usher into the search bar, you can see one of his silk caftans as an example of that sort of thing. Jackie Weinberg, Honor Dufton, Elizabeth Crichton and Veronica were often publicised like famous models, Seignon, using only their first or unmarried names, Jackie, Honor, Elspeth, and if they were out and about on its social circuit, standards of presentation were essential, particularly if you worked at the House of Morel. Perfectly groomed and dressed for the time of day, they wore cocktail dresses for drinks, full-length gowns for dinner dances, hats and gloves, sometimes bought straight from the packing room where glossy boxes were delivered from all over the world. Modelling was a full-time occupation outside of working hours often and even when off duty they looked the part which fitted the morals and accepted dress codes in Hull as you will see in the locations. Lipstick, the right hairdo, perfect grooming. It was unthinkable that they could be seen out in Hull and East Ryden looking a fright. You wouldn't go out to post a letter without your glory on said Jill Bradley, model and owner of model agency Holton Gray, of wearing makeup and doing her hair in the 60s and 70s. Women were expected to present and clothe themselves according to these rules, especially if they worked in the fashion industry. And in the 50s and early 60s, time of day dressing was adhered to without exception, meaning following the social expectations of where you were attending, a six o'clock dress or a travelling outfit, for instance, or an evening gown for the Holderness Hunt Ball. Showroom girls had access to the most desirable clothing in Hull, paying them off from their wages at cost price week by week on the drip. Often to the consternation of Betty Kitching, who calculated their payroll and commission and knew how much would be left if they borrowed too much. Connections mattered in modelling too, as it was natural to book people that Mira and Molly knew, like Sue's friend Mary Johnson. And when Betty's daughter Carol became a photographic model, she joined in with everyone else in a fashion show in 1967 on the Sparrow, a roll-on, roll-off ferry in Hull's docks which you can see something about in the locations too. In the 60s, after Mary Quant appeared, fashion divided between young and old. Young and fashion conscious, Mo West, another Maureen, walked at La Boutique in the early 1960s, recalling Catherine Worsley's wedding at York Minster on the 8th of June 1961, because the dress was designed by Couturier John Kavanagh and Mirelle had a copy to sell. The same year Sue modelled the noble fur coat, lilac a colour trend also worn at the Worsley wedding by Elizabeth the Queen. Aged 18, Mo said she was called to model for a salon show, staying for a couple of years in La Boutique, moving to Dorothea Turner, another outlet in Hessel on the Humber foreshore near Hull. Copying famous designers with tweaks here and there was rife during this era as it is in the present day and if you subscribe to the channel you'll see when the Morel Fashions video is uploaded where you can learn more about the amazing clothes and wedding dresses Morel's clients wore. In the later 60s and trained at Holton Grey, 
Bunny Black, real name Brenda, worked at La Boutique and Mirabelle also, the outlet opened in Cottingham Village, which you'll hear about in the locations video. Discovered aged 13 when she was already tall and rangy, she went on to have a successful career in national beauty competitions like for Anglia TV after leaving La Boutique and Mirabelle. And in the 60s when she started was given a name a bit like Twiggy, as was the fashion at the time like the shrimp. The La Boutique workroom she worked in had a more relaxed atmosphere, suitable for what was wanted by women of her own age and the daughters of Mirelle's clients who shopped at the salon. Rails hung with clothing and customers browsed, heading to changing rooms at the back to try and buy quickly and without fuss. With a funky, fashionable interior and less exclusive air, customers felt comfortable shopping at La Boutique in a less pressured and expensive atmosphere than the French Salon. Where do you think you would have shopped if you went to Mirelle? The Salon? The Boutique? Or both? Let us know in the comments below. By the early 70s, Holton Gray's models had become well known on Mirelle's catwalks Jill Bradley, June Barkworth, Shirley Coates, Alma Oldfield, a white-haired older lady no longer called a matron in the era of equality, Carol Carr and Anne Hesk, who owned Hornsey Boutique, The Bonnet Box, all had regular bookings. Mirelle was their favourite, said Mary, because of the cachet, the imaginative staging and beautiful clothes. The volume of in-person fashion shows required it. Until the mid-1970s, it was a continual part of selling at the House of Mirel. Fashion modelling was an ongoing business in the city far into that decade, but eventually it declined due to the expense of paying for models, said Mary. Different methods of advertising more cost-effective. Holt and Gray and Mirelle were inextricably linked from the 60s to the 70s, however, through them they supplied models for photographs, publicity and their fashion shows. <laughs> 